Good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you might be watching. Jeff Hudson here from United Computer Consultants. I'd like to demonstrate and explain to you and hopefully teach you the basics of creating a project using Microsoft Project 2010. The project we'll be creating will be a simple one landscaping the backyard. When I first open project I'll see this screen. Here is an area called the entry table. Here is an area called the Gantt chart area. And as I add tasks and durations of the tasks, when they start and finish, I'll also see that a bar chart will appear, a horizontal bar chart called a Gantt chart. Now, a couple of uh, tips just before we start. First of all, by default, when you first start project, you'll see that new tasks down here in the bottom left hand corner are um, manually scheduled. Now this is perhaps not a good idea from a learning point of view initially so what I suggest you do is to go up into the task tab across to the task group click on the drop arrow for mode and just change to auto schedule and we'll see why as, the, um, as time goes on. I now see that new tasks down here are auto scheduled, so fine. I also see a grey area here on the left hand side called the view bar. When I right click on the view bar and then click view bar at the bottom, then I see all the various views that are available to me in project. And learning what views do what is really the key to the program itself. Now, what we're going to do is to start entering some tasks. And I'm going to say that the first thing I need to do is to have, as it were, a heading, preparation. And then the tasks that I'll type in, I can click or press enter. And I can keep adding the tasks. So the next one might be arrange delivery of soil. And I press enter and I see that by default project enters in a duration of one day for each of those tasks and a start date. You remember we set the start date for this project as the 2nd of June. The uh, start date can be changed if you wish by going into project and then project information. Uh, however the start date uh, I've set as the 2nd of June but I could change that if I wished. We'll leave it the 2nd of June. Also I see over, over here, whilst we're in this window, that the calendar is being used as a standard calendar. And the way that works is the project nominates an 8 hour working day by default. It starts at 8 in the morning, goes through to midday, an hour break for lunch I guess, and finishes at 5 in the afternoon. So it is an 8 hour day for a 5 day week. In other words, the weeks are shown here in terms of the working days and the two grey bars occur on Saturdays and Sundays. They can be changed because I can also add other what we might think of as non-working days which we'll see shortly. Now I don't want to keep going on typing down here to waste your time so I'm going to move to a, another file where I've already entered in the information here. So you'll see that the start date is the same in all cases as I entered the tasks. That's because I have said auto schedule. But now what I can do is to drag down through those tasks because I have two headings here, the preparation and then commence work. I want to treat those as headings, not as tasks. So what I'm going to do is to go to the task tab and choose the link button here, link tasks. And what that does, it says that the preparation starts on the 2nd of June and the very first task is arranged delivery of soil, which starts also on the 2nd of June, remembering preparation is purely a heading. I then notice that each of these tasks is linked by uh, arrows and we are using what is called a uh, uh, 
finish to start relationship. In other words, one task finishes and then the next one starts. So that's fine. Now what I want to do is to drag down through these tasks and also link them. Good. So no problem there. But what I want to do is to start these tasks on the 6th of June. Uh, uh, on, on the 6th, on Friday the 6th of June because this task finishes on the 5th. So what I'm going to do is to change the start date here whoops, here uh, to the 6th of June there and I can now say OK, link them good, and there we go. Now the commence work uh, actually needs to be across here, doesn't it? So I'm going to change that also to the 6th of June, just so things are in, in, the, right, uh, in the right place. So now I know that these are headings. But what I want to do is to drag down through those tasks, and if I hold my control key down, I can also drag down through those tasks and I'm going to indent them by choosing the uh, in the schedule group the indent task. And what that does, it indents the task, it makes preparation a heading, commence work a heading, and it says that the preparation lasts for four days, and it puts a black bar across the top there. That's called critical tasks. That's the critical task line. There's another one down here. These are taking five days to complete. So I've simply uh, added uh, the tasks, I've then linked them, and I have then indented them by selecting them and so that I can see the critical uh, um, tasks here, if you like, the critical part. So, so far so good. Now, as I add more and more tasks, you'll find that the Gantt chart will move across until it becomes difficult to see the uh, to see the tasks. So you can get around that if you want to see the Gantt chart bar relative to a task. Uh, remember there are not many tasks here. But what you can do if you wanted to see the Gantt chart bar for placing the rocks, then uh, you could uh, click on that task and over here in the task uh, tab in the editing group scroll to task and that will move the Gantt chart across so that the task lines up with the bar itself. So that's just a little tip there. You'll notice that that scroll bar is now uh, moved across as well. I can also see that with the Gantt chart tools when I'm in the Gantt chart I see a format tab and the Format tab enables me over here in the Show Hide group to click on Outline Number. And when I do that, those indented tasks become indexed, as it were. So it's uh, a little easier for us to see what's happening. It is also numbered, the preparation and the commence work headings. Uh, but as you can see, it's uh, uh, performed what we might think of as a multi-level list there. As we can see from the arrows in the links across here in the Gantt chart, that as each task finishes, the next one starts. Now that's fine, it does that by default. But it could be that I can perform some tasks so that, they will, that will start when the other, uh, before the other one has finished. For example, let's say that I was spreading seed with one hand but watering the seeds in with the other. Now each task has a predecessor and I can see here in the predecessor column that the watering the yard is, is preceded by the spreading of the seed. But I'm going to say that I want to start watering the yard at the same time that I 
am spreading the seed. In other words, I'm going to reduce the time of the uh, of the project by a day. And the way I do that is to double click on this task. And I see here in the window that appears that the predecessor of uh, of the uh, watering the yard is the spreading of the seed. So that's fine. What I'm going to do here, I see it's a finish to start, but what I'm going to do is to click there and then choose the drop arrow and I'm going to say it is a start to start. And when I do that and click OK, I see now that the watering of the yard can start at the same time as the uh, as, as the uh, spreading of the seed. So I can do that sort of thing. Now, from buying the soil to the removing of the existing lawn, I can't quite see all of that text, so I now notice that I can just drag this like an Excel column, if you like. What's going to happen here, I, I need an extra two days from when I buy the soil and uh, the rocks and the lawn seed to when I start removing the, the, removing the existing lawn because the person who is going to be the front end loader and operator has said that he will be delayed by two days. Now remember this task was due to start on the 6th of June and finish on the 6th of June. But what I'm going to do is to say that there is a lag time from when I can start that task after that one. So I'm going to double click on this task and in my predecessor I see that the re the remove existing lawn was preceded by by the soil rocks and lawn seed but I need to allow for an extra two days so I'm going to lag the project by two days so lagging extends the time of the project and when I click on OK I now see that there is a two day lag it's taken care of the Saturdays and the Sundays here uh, and it says that that task will start now on the um, uh, on the Monday uh, sorry on Tuesday the 10th of June so it's left out the Friday and the Monday so uh, that's lag time we'll look shortly at lead time what is lead time lead time is the opposite of lag time. Lead time is like a negative lag time. How does it work? Well I'm going to say that halfway through the arranging delivery of soil that I'm going to be able to employ the labourer. So I'm going to double click on the labourer and then I'm going to say that the uh, lead time is 0.5 of a day, that is half a day but I need to make it a minus number because it is the opposite of a lag. So I say minus 0.5 of a day. And when I click OK, there I see that this particular task has moved in uh, by half a, half a, um, half a day uh, in relation to the arranged delivery of soil. So there's a lead time, there's a lag time there. Remember the lead time is a minus lag time. So that started us off on our, on our uh, um, uh, project but I also see uh, that I can change uh, the duration of the task so for example I might say that it's going to take me two days to, to place the rocks so if I change that to a two and press enter or click away there I see that the time for that particular task is now two days so that's a good start for us on, on, on project in terms of the uh, entry table and uh, looking at the Gantt chart 